be making bases. What's going on? It's Ever J Music. In this lecture, I'm going to be going over a couple of quick tips you can use to polish your track and basically master it and bring the level up a little bit so that it sounds radio friendly and, and everything like that. So let's go ahead and jump into the first step on this process, which is to bounce down your actual session into a high quality wave file. How you're going to do that is push command B and that's going to pull up these options to bounce down your track. So there's different options. You this PCM is the option that you want to have selected. You want to make sure that you have a wave file for the file format. The resolution needs to be 24 bit and the sample rate needs to be 48 K. Normalize. I go ahead and leave that off. I also do this offline. I don't select any of these other options. Dithering, leave it at none. And then you're just going to click on OK. From there, you're going to go ahead and rename the track. And you can select it to go anywhere you want, but I always put my tracks to the desktop initially. So push bounce. Let it do its thing. After everything finishes bouncing down and everything like that, you're going to want to go ahead and open up a brand new project or a new session. And we're going to import that audio file into that new session. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to file right here. We'll go new. We'll go ahead and say close. We'll save it. Audio track. Oh, that's fine. Let's create an audio track. I'm only muting this out because of the feedback for the microphone. And then what we do here is you can go to file, import, and go to audio file. Or you can hit up your finder window and go to your desktop or wherever you saved it and then just drag it right into the workspace window. This down here. We go to change project, import the tempo. We don't have any markers, but we'll import those. And voila, so we have our new track here. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing is going over here to this end marker and bringing this all the way to the very end of the track. If you forget to do that, what's going to end up happening is you'll bounce down your track and it'll have a bunch of dead space after your track ends and that's not cool so make sure you do that before doing anything now i'm gonna go over two ways you could do a basic master on your on your beat the first way is through using what's called an adaptive limiter okay so what we'll do is we'll go over here we can just pull up the the, the um, mixing window and if you go to the stereo out go to audio effects and then scroll down to dynamics adaptive limiter is the first option click on stereo and it's pretty simple all you're going to do is go to this uh, ceiling and take this down to negative 1 db and you can either leave the, the gain at 3 or you can kind of play around with that but basically what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a loop on the hook, which I pretty much know that's where it's at. And then we'll just push play and we'll kind of hear the difference between the two. And again, like I said, you sometimes you have to adjust the gain based on the type of track that you have here. This track right here, it had has some headroom 
And when I say headroom, I'll just turn this off and I'll show you what I mean. So headroom is any room that you have below deep um, zero and say around negative five DB or negative three. So check this out. It's hitting right around where it's felt should be. So because it has a lot of headroom, I can turn the gain up significantly. If it didn't have a whole lot of headroom, then I would either not turn the gain up or just turn it up just a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's how you would do that. Negative one dB right here and then adjust the gain based on the amount of headroom that you have here. So I play it before and then I play it after. Let's check this out. This is how it sounds before. Pretty dope but this is how it's gonna sound when you put this plug in on there. Now, if you wanted to, you could do some other things like come over here and put EQ on the whole track here. I recommend kind of keeping it simple, but say you like if you had like a, you know, your 808s are coming in too hard, you can come over here and dip off some of this and put that, yeah, put that uh, EQ first on the channel. But here we go. Let's play it now. You can do some basic EQ in here if you wanted to. All right, so that's pretty much that. Um, let's take a look at another option here. So if you could afford to go ahead and get Isotopes Ozone, which is a mastering plugin, then I would highly suggest doing it. Um, it has a lot of cool features on that plugin where you don't even have to do a whole lot of work in order to make it happen. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this is Ozone. If you're new to Ozone, it's a mastering plugin. Um, they have some presets that you can access here. So I can click on that and I can just use these presets if I wanted to. But one thing I really like to do is just use this mastering assistant. And so what you would do is you just click on this mastering assistant and it's gonna pull up these three options, okay? So you have modules, so you can either do modern or vintage. And then based on the loudness that you want it to be, you can um, either pick low, medium, or high. And then finally, you would also um, can pick whether it's gonna be on a CD or streaming. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it modern. I'm going to leave it manual at the medium intensity. And we're going to do ahead and do the streaming. So I'm going to go ahead and push next. After you push next, the only other thing you have to do is just push play. And it's going to analyze everything and bring the volume up. So dope, you know what I'm saying? After we push that mastering assistant, let it do its thing, it pretty much put all of the different plugins that you would need to basically take this up to the next level. We have a maximizer here, which the maximizer is pretty much like that adaptive limiter. We have some basic EQ here. 
which had already found some some areas that needed to be adjusted and did it for us and then we have another EQ on here and so what we'll do now is we'll just listen to it before and after and then this is it after It sounds pretty dope that way. So what we'll do now is once we found the, the master that we want to use or the settings that we want to use, we'll go over here again and make sure that everything is lined up properly. Like we have this in market at the very end of the track. And from there, we'll go ahead and push command B once again. And here's where you can go ahead and bounce down your track. So if you want to do a wave file, you can bounce it down as that, but we're going to do an MP3. You don't want to mess with mono since uh, the track is going to be in stereo. You want to do bare minimum 192, or you could do this up to 320. 192 is pretty solid to go with. Stereo, you could do joint stereo if you want, and then write eight, um, ID3. They, these are basically going to be your metadata. Okay. I think I call this Logic Man. And we'll put my production name there, EverJ. Boom. Normalize off since we already mastered the track. And push OK. Then it's going to give you an option to name the track again. And then you can select where you want it. I always put it on the desktop initially. So we'll bounce it down. And voila, you are done. Now what we could do here is go to our finder and just make sure that this is sounding the way it needs to sound. So I'll go ahead and click on it. Perfect. All right. Appreciate y'all watching. Thank you for making it to the end of the course. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But anyway, thank y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.